Hey all, it's Adam here with another episode of Differently Wired, the YouTube channel dedicated to smashing stigma against neurodivergent individuals and promoting neurodiversity. So yeah, and welcome back everyone. And I just have to say, holy crap, wow. You know, as of the writing of this video, and it's gone up since, 28 subscribers, I think it's closer to 31 now, and 118 views on my last video, again, I think closer to 130 some now. That's insane! Honestly, thank you so much to everyone who has liked, shared, and subscribed. I honestly couldn't be doing this without any of you, and we're only just getting started. So, today, I want to talk about something which is such a cliché when it comes to autism spectrum disorder that everyone already knows about it, but it's something that's also not very well understood, but also extremely fun. So, whatever do I mean, you might ask. Well, special interests. So, how does a special interest work, you might ask? I mean, everyone knows that autistic people have special interests that we're really, really passionate about. You know, we get really into things. So, is it like Sheldon Cooper, where you're always into trains and does it consume your life? You are at the throttle. You are the engineer. You are running the locomotive. First off, Let's not talk about Sheldon Cooper in easier parts. Don't get me wrong, I recognize he is kind of a icon for autistic representation on TV, but I don't think he really should be, although that's a topic for another video entirely. I find he's a bit problematic and a bit of a jerk, and it's often used, at, like Asperger's autism are often used as an excuse for his behavior. Like, I, I, I don't know. He rubs me the wrong way, and he rubs a lot of autistics the wrong way, so... We're going to just avoid him. But that being said, I digress. Yes, it can often be like Sheldon Cooper, with a single-minded obsession with one thing like trains. It doesn't necessarily have to be, though, and that's what we're going to talk about today a little bit. Like, in my experience, there are two kinds of special interests. There's temporary and there's permanent. Basically, some things are with you for a season, and some things are with you forever. But they all basically start the same way. An intense need... Well, first off, no, before we even get to the intense need, a big fascination with something, like something you really like, like you, something that looks really cool to you. So you start to familiarize yourself with it. And as you do, you start to come to the realization that you want to know everything there is to know about this thing. You, you have this drive. You have to consume it. You have to know it. You have to know it inside and out deeper than anyone else does because that's what you do because you're that into it. It's, an, it's a wonderful feeling. I love it so much. Um, I, these things can be fairly cliche and stereotypically autistically specific. Like, for example, uniform designs in science fiction properties, or the way traffic lights work, or, you know. They can be weirdly specific like that, but they can also be general interest things that we just take to the next level and have an insane amount of knowledge on. And cases like that... Uh, like, that would be things like, you know, pop culture franchises, that kind of thing. But basically, when you're on the spectrum and you have a special interest, though, you need to know everything there is to know about it. You need to know it inside out. Like I said, it, it consumes your thoughts. You want to... You, th you think about it all the time. You're like... You, you, can, you can think about other things, but you want to know about it, and you want to, you want to get back to doing it. And you find ways to bring it into the conversations you have with your friends and to do all of these things. It's, it can be all-consuming. I mean, that's not to say it's an unhealthy thing. No, 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 no. It's just the way our brains work. It's, it can be an all-consuming, awesome thing that, that forms a part of the things we love in our lives. But here's the kicker, though. You can actually have more than one. Contrary to stereotypical belief, like, stereotype would have you think that all autistics are into, like, one super-consuming thing. No. No, we on the spectrum are just as well-rounded as anyone else. We have our interests, we just, we just take them to the next level. So you can definitely have more than one. I have several myself. And this brings us to the next part of the video that I'm sure everyone wants to know about, and that is what are my special interests? What brings my autistic heart joy? What makes me happy flap? And dominates a lot of the conversations. Because <laughs> let's be real, it totally dominates all the conversations I have with friends. Well, 
stick with me. <laughs> and don't be afraid. But this is about to get extremely nerdy extremely fast. I hope you're all ready for the wild ride. So this first special interest I want to talk about today is one that I'm sure you've gathered from my previous video. Star Trek. It's one of my oldest obsessions, and it's kind of been something I've been into for as long as I can remember. It was responsible for me getting bullied a lot in grade school because I was just an obsessive Trekkie, and it's just always been important to me. I want to do an entire video about what the Star Trek franchise means to me as a nerd and a spectrum dweller, but just to give you guys like an idea, it... I, I know details about the lore of that franchise that go well beyond what most people know. Like, for example, the Starship Voyager from Star Trek Voyager is capable of traveling at warp 9.975 as a maximum cruising speed using its variable geometry warp nacelles. Also, the Vulcan Time of Awakening is a time period in Vulcan history where their barbaric and warlike ways led to that them reaching a crossroads where a great philosopher proposed a path of logic to them and not all of them bought it and some of them went off world. And that's where the, the evil Romulan Empire comes from. It's stuff like that. I know so much about this franchise because I just want to know everything. It's a nerdy passion of mine and it's a special interest of mine. And frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Star Trek is just a thing for me and not only that, but I like well-constructed sci-fi in general that is cohesive and and goes like, has continuity. As much as I like to make fun of people who bash Star Trek Discovery and The Last Jedi for this, continuity errors drive me nuts. Sci-fi franchises should be well thought out and well plotted out, damn it. Okay, I went off on a wee bit of a tangent there, but I... I hope I don't sound a little too much like this. Someone has mixed an amazing Spider-Man in with the Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man series. This will not stand. It's not just Star Trek, though, that gets me. Trek may have been my first love, but honestly, I adore science fiction in general. I, it's, it, my second favorite sci-fi property is it's actually its competitor, Star Wars. <laughs> It's funny though, way back in the 90s when my parents first divorced and when they moved into, like my dad and stepmom moved into her house, that first Christmas they got me a copy of Star Wars A New Hope and the old 1970s release that doesn't even say A New Hope on it, just Star Wars and the original art. And they said to me, you'll love this Adam, it's just like Star Trek. Don't make promises like that to an autistic child unless you're ready to follow through. Let me just say that. So I, I tried to watch it, okay? I got through the A Long Time Ago in a Galaxy Far, Far Away scene. I watched the Tantive Four uh, fleeing from the Imperial Star Destroyer at the beginning. And that's one of my favorite scenes now. I love that scene now. But, you know, I watched it through, not what sure to think at the time. I met R2-D2 and C-3PO. And it turned off. I was so disappointed. That's not like Star Trek, I thought. I even said that to my parents. I'm like, this is nothing like Star Trek. It took my best friend from childhood and his dad, well, his dad, to get me and him both into Star Wars. He was a huge fan, and he had the original unedited classic trilogy on cassette. He made us watch it as kids, and that is what got me into Star Wars. That is what created the Star Wars fan in me. I love my parents, but getting me a new hope did not do it, necessarily. <laughs> That's, but now Star Wars is one of my favorite uh, fandoms to this day. It's, it's, part, it's part of my special interest obsessions, and I love it. Because that's just the thing. It's not just an interest. It's a delightful obsession. So just to give you guys an idea of some of my special interests and how all-consuming they are, I really want to give you guys a little bit of a tour of my apartment, just so that you guys can see how truly like passionate I am about the things that I really love, okay? So without further ado, here we go. 
First off, we have my Wall of Star Wars. This is my primary Star Wars collection, and it just shows how super into Star Wars I really am, in addition to sci-fi in general. Those are Funko Pops pretty much for every single character or main character in Star Wars. I have fan art I've got at conventions, Black Series action figures of Supreme Leader Snoke and Grand Admiral Thrawn, uh, old Lego from the 90s, um, some old Micro Machine Star Wars figures from the 90s, and Old action figures from the 90s, which I've collected at various conventions. They're not all from the 90s, some of them are from the Disney relaunch era. But yeah, no, that's... That's uh, my Star Wars collection, and I mean, that just should just show you right there how when I want to know about something and be into something, I want to be really into something. Next, we have my wall of video game consoles. So, I mean, not just video game consoles, uh, memorabilia in general. I have a Master Sword from The Legend of Zelda. I have art prints. Hey, look, it's my master's degree. Yay! See, I promise I have an education when I'm doing this stuff. Um, as well, we have some of my consoles I've collected over the years, both Nintendo and otherwise. Uh, that is a JVC XI, a limited run system made in partnership between Sega and JVC. In the 90s, I have my Sega Genesis Model 1 with its original box, my Sega Genesis Model 2, my Dreamcast, PS1 and PS Classic, Xbox, various handhelds, and my wall of Nintendo. Yes, quite impressive. Starting at the top, that is my Nintendo Virtual Boy. Uh, again, look at the Star Trek obsession. There's my TNG era bridge crew and Enterprise D. Um, my NES and Super NES and Game Boy, my N64 and GameCube, my Nintendo Wii and Wii U, and various assorted other Funkos, and a dragon statuette, which was my late Aunt Judy's. Uh, rest in peace, Aunt Judy. Thank you for that. I will treasure it always. Anyway, I'm rambling again, but I hope you've been able to learn a little bit about autistic special interests from this video. They can be all-consuming, yes, but they're also one of the best parts about being on the spectrum. Our special interests are what make us unique. Like, they're a part of us, and they make us who we are. And, I mean, I'm saying that as someone who got bullied a lot in grade school for my special interests. This is who I am, and I'm not changing for anyone. And if you can't take me at my nerdiest and <laughs> most special interests obsessed, then we don't have to be friends. Although, you know, I really hope we can be friends because I really enjoyed this video project. It's been fun. Um, but yeah, that's this is me. And you know what? I like who I am. Special interests and all. Live long and prosper, everyone. If you like this video and want to see more content by me at Differently Wired, remember to like, subscribe, and share this video on all social media. Also, you can find a link to my Patreon down below, and I'd really love if you continue to support me like you have with the last two videos. You guys rock, like I said, and I really look forward to making more content for you guys. So until next time, keep it neurodivergent, folks.